Hello everyone, I'm AWAC. I'm Gamma Dev. And uh, welcome back. And we're, uh, we thought we might do a uh, rail shooter episode. Um, uh, then the first one we're doing is Starblade, which uh, originally started life as a uh, coin op cabinet from Namco. Yeah, I've never, do you, I, you play this in the arcade, I think. Oh yeah, okay. oh yeah. But I don't remember it ever being anything but a sit down cockpit version. I don't think I ever, there ever was a, uh, like a upright or anything, so it was... I think I'm, I might have seen an upright once, but yeah, and most often it was a, a sit-down cabinet. Which is probably why it's popular, because it was a environmental unit, it had the rumble, it had mm -hmm. the magnified, oddly magnified screen. They had like some kind of weird lens on the front of the monitor, so I... it looked much bigger than it really was. Yeah, I don't remember that. I... And uh, it was all... Uh, Rendered in real time, and I know there was a lot of people who originally thought it was a, uh, a, a laser, laser disc game because previously, before the arcades uh, had crashed the first time around, uh, you know, if you wanted to get pre-rendered CG backgrounds, you had to have a laser disc. But of course, yeah. by that time, uh, stuff got. This is actually not better than what the arcade was. This is the enhanced version I'm, we're looking at here. There's like the original on the left here, and there, which is just basically. Uh, Smooth, smooth shaded polygons, but no texturing. And then on the right side, you've got the enhanced version, which is all textured. And of course, we now have that wonderful UI thing that I hate, which is okay. We have two color, two choices, and two colors. Try and guess which one you're selecting. <laughs> which to this day appears even on Blu-ray menus. Which is oh, like, for guys, Pete's sake. if you have two choices, make it obvious what you got. Okay, so I'm going to show you the, I guess, original, okay, arcade version. Is there a white dot on the screen? Or is that... Yes, I'm sorry, my DLP is starting to die. There is a stuck white pixel on the screen. Dun, dun, dun. However, fixing it is, is relatively easy. It's no more complicated than replacing a CPU in a desktop PC. And replacement DLPs are about $220. Okay. Well, if they're still available. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they are. Okay. Well, that's right, I Mitsubishi guess. Mitsubishi still makes them. Mats I'm sorry, Mitsubishi. Yeah. No, no. Oh, now, now I got to look it up. <laughs> I mean, they don't make any. There aren't any more rear projection DLPs. And... Alas, no. Alas, no. Scramble. I love that game. Oh, wait, <laughs> pre fight checklist. Okay, so this is. Oh wait, up is up and down is down. Okay. Uh, yeah. So it's. So basically, it's shoot anything that moves. There are no friendlies in this game whatsoever. And even if there were, you can't hit them. I don't remember if this. Uh... Supported the the mouse and or flight stick or not? It might have because this was a this was like a second year release, wasn't it? Mm. It was not. A, it was not, yeah. It wasn't an early release. It was. Oh wait, ninety one refers to the original the arcade, arcade cabinet yeah, release, yeah. not the. Uh... Yeah, this this I remember being like in the second or third wave of of three D O titles. Whoa. Oh, can I just hold down? Uh, it's faster, I think. They... No, that's right. There's only basically fire. No missiles. No nothing. Just yeah. fire. This looked way better in a cabinet, sitting in a cabinet. <laughs> well, also, I mean, they didn't uh, use any kind of uh, FMV compression. Right. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it was great. With the surround sound was awesome in the cabinet. Uh, that was, and it, it had rumble on the seats mm -hmm. and everything. So that's that, it was more of an event. Mm -hmm. As a as an arcade cabinet, and you know when arcades had started to make a comeback, and but at the time, this time when this was out, this was, it was mainly like Street Fighter clones and maybe you know mm. Tetris arcade or something, you know stuff like that. Now, when you say it was real time rendered, everything was real time rendered, or yes. just the back or just yes. the four. There's no there's oh, no okay. there's no laser disc in this thing, which right. what you had to do at the time, and there's no hard drive on this thing. Mm. Um, now, this was all you know because there was a sequel to this. Yes, that did have. Was a laser disc, yeah. yeah. But that one, you're thinking of, uh, was it Galaxian Three? Yes. Yeah, that one was actually like for an amusement park because it it was scaled up and that you had like multiple mm -hmm. people each had guns and you looked at yeah, a huge people. screen. Yes, actually a dual screen, as I recall. Well, it's like you each had your own side screen, and then there was also well before they actually had widescreen projectors, they just took two standard def projectors, right. stuck them side by side, but and be, hoped they stayed in sync. Yeah, but you went into like a room and stuff like that. It's like yeah. you wouldn't see it even at an arcade. You would just have to go to like a special. Mm -hmm. Again, there was like amusement a brief center. amusement center. Yeah, there was like that brief time where they had like the most primitive, god awful virtual reality set set up. <laughs> yeah. That you know today you would you would you know say hey here's my 
three hundred dollar Oculus Rift to go to town, and you know, versus you know, their you know things, their system, their custom systems, of networked PCs mm. doing a really really crude mech fighting games or. Oh that? my gosh, the me oh right the one oh right um. Which, so there was that. Oh, what was the name of it? It was where you were actually. It was a mecha fighter. Battle right? something. Battle, I can't battle, battle. remember. And their like opening video had was like. Ballerina. Or had, no. <laughs> yeah. And their open their their like establishing video had. Um, oh no, that was a totally different game than the mech fighter. In fact, there was one that even used like it had. Uh, it's like okay. network PCs for the and I think even something more even more powerful than a PC. Uh huh. You know with. Uh, you know, custom like graphics units for the actual game, but then like for the the instrument panels and the HUDs and all that stuff, it was mm -hmm. um, they used they used a bunch of Amigas were thrown yeah. into the mix as well. So it was mm -hmm. like obviously hideously expensive and immediately out of date within like six months. And, you know, <laughs> Alas, yes, and unable to earn back its money probably. <laughs> mm. But of course, they were also really expensive. They would charge you like yeah. you know per minute, like some of yeah, it was amount. a huge yeah. You had to yeah, it was a. It was a very expensive hobby. And so I'm remembering three games. One was basically a mecha fighter. Right. You know, so it's like one of those stand-up walkie robot things. Yes. Um, the other one was uh, a racer, uh, where you were like racing down this tube. Um, okay. And the third one was uh, you were flying... Ah. Owie, owie, owie. You were flying an actual um, jet fighter in a more or less real as realistic as possible simulator and the pod that you were sitting in actually like moved up and down and tilted and all this and I can't remember what that was called um me oh, geez M magic magic rift magic vision something oh yeah um we actually did one of those at work uh where it was like yeah they had a pod system that you know uh -huh. had the you would all lock into your own little pod and then you could mm -hmm. I, I think they were changed out software so you could do like a um Jet fighters, and then you also had like mm -hmm. I think they also had a spaceship one and all this stuff. But it was, uh, I wish I'd known about the spaceship. But yeah, one. it was uh, yeah. You definitely you know you Ma bought time. Uh, uh, Magic Edge. Magic Edge. Magic Edge. Yes, that's exactly what it was. Mm. First, I'm I'm telling this, and I'm starting to realize. Oh, the other thing that this reminds me of. I mean, obviously you'll see that they're just ripping out the plot of Star Wars <laughs> shortly here. Um, is um, Here's the Imperial fleet, and soon we'll reach the Death Star. Oh wait, I mean Red Eye. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you'll uh, soon come across. Um, is, I was thinking, is, is the Last Starfighter? Ah, uh. is that game in the Last Starfighter, which mm -hmm. I, almost ten years before this was going to be an actual arcade game? Yes, that uh, good but friend of ours at work worked on, mm -hmm. uh, Jim Morris. Yep. I don't think he'll care. He, Oh wait! Now do I have to press the play button to get the? Press See, this was a, this was the definition of a quarter sucker. Yes. In the, uh, do you want to continue from where you are or start over? It's, unless you you know are like the wizard, you're you're not going to have the reflexes to get through this on one quarter. So you just keep feeding quarters of the machine because you're like because of course they have to show you you're almost to the end. <laughs> you're so close to the end. It'd be a real shame to quit now for just the price of two more quarters because I'm pretty sure this was a fifty cent yeah, game. Yeah, this one fifty cents was. Uh starting to make it inroads um yeah uh, but uh no but, the, yeah the the other yeah, the quarter sucker you know, continue for another yeah. But yeah the uh but the the last starfighter game which was only ever in prototype form yes that jim morris worked on has i it recently showed up that somebody had tried to get part of it working in maine uh-huh and they were making some progress, but apparently the uh, the dump that they have with the ROMs is kind of bad oh, because no. they had you know already suffering from bit rot. Yeah. But somebody got enough of it working that they have um, they have some video on YouTube of the thing, mm -hmm. and you can see what it was. Really darn impressive, you know. For uh, they mm -hmm. basically took the the iRobot engine and put it on steroids. Yeah. And so you actually do have a good chunk of the movie that looks as good as this done, mm -hmm. you know, in early polygonal 3D fulfill. Fulfilled 3D. Yeah, know, but so. the movie didn't do well, so they didn't release the game. Yeah. Also, um, Atari was going through some major upheaval well, yeah, at that point. That whole thing, yeah. But yeah, the the unreleased prototypes that keep showing up from Atari's heyday they just just boggle my mind. That you know, like year after year, it's like, oh, this was an an unknown prototype we found from somebody who, you know, as they were being escorted out the door by you know, Jack Trimmel's. Uh, Thugs. Stormtroopers. Yeah. Uh, 
God. you know, found it in the back of their drawer, you, you know, know what, and we've saved it. Yeah. You know, I, what I re I didn't, I had wow. totally forgotten. There we go. Uh, I had totally forgotten that Jack Tramiel had purchased Federated um, Retailer Group. Remember them? No. Oh, um, it was sort of like Best Buy before there was a Best Buy. It was confined mostly to the West Coast. It was a chain. Um, so if like you, the good guys? Was a little, a like little best, bit. Was Best Buy before was a Best bit, Buy? A bit like good guys. Um, and the, ah. its main claim to fame at that point was their ads were done by Shadow Stevens. Uh -huh. And they were all complete lunacy. Um, in fact, if you look for Shadow, so S-H-A-D-O-E Stevens. Right. Uh, and if you look up that on Google and look for the federated video ads, you'll see uh, a, a bunch of crazy stuff that he did for them. So, and he actually like has this long feature length movie up that I think he or one of his friends um, edited together. And one of the things that it makes note of in the movie is that in like 1990 something it was, uh, Tramiel purchased Federated and then set, basically fired about half of everybody Told Shadow just half, yeah, Jesus. something, yeah, usually, <laughs> yeah, sh fired hu fired a huge number of people just cause, um, right. and then told Shadow, um, we're not going to pay you any more money, but keep making those ads. So Shadow quits. Oh, Shadow gee, stops making why. ads, and then 15 months later, Atari's bankrupt. Oh, what a shock! Um, <laughs> no, it's uh, it's not. That's every story I've heard about that from, uh, like when. But the joke I said about stormtroopers, like the apparently when Trimmel entered the the Sunnyvale Atari offices the day he took over, like the the PA system said, "Imperial troops have entered the base. Imperial troops have entered the base," <laughs> and he just went from office to office saying, "What do you do? Okay, you're fired." You know, basically anybody who didn't answer something related to computer operating systems uh -huh. was pretty much just you know fired. Oh, we're making games, we're not making that crap anymore. Forget about it. Get out of here. You know. so, yeah, business is war. That was his philosophy. Yeah. Looks mm -hmm. like he lost. So yeah, and you know, heard a lot of people along the no way. No one will ever want video games ever again. That was his philosophy in '84, and then oh, what was the big hit next year? Uh, the NES. <laughs> <laughs> and then he tried to resurrect the the 7800 that he basically killed, and then he has to go begging to the guys who actually did the 7800. It's like, do you still have the molds for that thing? It's like I could remember where they are for the right price. <laughs> <laughs> Good for them. Because <laughs> yeah, it's like. Because when he saw it, they, apparently they were, you know, finished, about ready to release it, and Tramiel comes in, yeah, we'll sell these for about 50 bucks. He's like, you can't make money selling these yeah. for $50. Like, nope, it's just money just for one person, me. <laughs> because Atari themselves didn't make that. It was, like, subcontracted out to yeah. General Computer Corp. And, right, which who he would then not pay. Yeah, yeah, so they learned that lesson all too well, so then when they had Atari over the barrel trying to release that console, they made, they made him pay, you know, so... Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah. yeah. They said they keep... 50% deposit and the rest right away. They still, yeah. They still keep, uh, like I said, finding prototypes of, like, you know... Wow. Still want to do a podcast of all the, uh, 5200 games, because the 5200 had more games, I think, unreleased than were actually released. Wow. And they're all awesome. The ones that are, the prototypes that have shown up, like there was one for Tempest that was nearly complete that somebody finally released huh. that was really good. I, I'm, I'm a like, bit of a snob when it comes to Tempest, because... I, I know. Oh, what is that? What? Oh, oh, I guess you only, you only get so continues? many. Uh, All right, yes. okay. That's a cheap ass way of doing it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, the um, no, um, it's, it's, Tempest is pretty much what drew me back into playing video games back in 1980 something or other. Um, Tempest drew you back into video games, and yes, and, well, and so then no, because because um, like. So the first video, first video game. You were burned out on Breakout, were you? Uh, and Pong sorry, sorry, or no, something like that? Pong, well, then there were the racing games, if you remember, like the four-player racing games where you're like oh, going around this round that. circuit. Okay, um, how do I quit? Because I accidentally... <laughs> what? I what accidentally started the, the thing again. So oh. Like, is there, uh... That's fine. Well, you could start the textured version. Well, that's what I was trying to oh, do, okay. but it... Pause, pause. Okay. Is this another one of those damn games that doesn't actually feature? You can pause, but you can't actually quit a game. Why would you ever want to quit? I don't, know. I don't know. Well, at least there's a pause menu. Yeah, okay. That was an innovation of the Atari 5200. The pause button. Well, you just stop the clock. Yes, but <laughs> but still, the fact that it was always there in every game and it's uh -huh. on the controller and front and center. That was innovation. People. Okay, I'm just gonna <laughs> I'm just gonna die. Okay. Uh, while it. Uh, you just um. um 
But you're talking about getting back into video games because oh, of yeah, Tempest. This, yeah, because those racing games. And I just, I just got. Oh, and then there was a Star Trek game. It was actually a black and white and really old Star Trek game. It's not black and white. You're thinking of the Sega sit down cockpit one? Uh, no. It's an arcade one. Which one? Sega sit down arcade one. Is there an arcade? Is an arcade game? There's no. This is from the 1970s. Yeah. Well, okay. This is. Was this an arcade? Was it was Star it, Trek? Is it an arcade game though? Yes, it is. Mm, no, I may have to dig it up. I may have to dig it up. No, I actually played it. Uh, it may have not have been a licensed Star Trek. I don't there know. Was a Space Star War Trek. or Star there Hawk, was, uh, and there was uh, it, like you know there was the the ships and the the things, and you had to blow them. Up. And so anyway, so I got like overhead or three D, three D, three D ish. It was sort of two D done in a three D way. Sort of, it was sort of like Outrun. You know how Outrun is just basically a bunch of two D sprites yeah. that they're scaling at you. It was like that. Um, only not nearly as sophisticated. It was all black think, and white. I think you're thinking of Starhawk, but uh, yeah. Um, I'll see if I can dig it. I'll vector games are something you should know by now. That, and, uh, that I and so I got really super frustrated with those, and and so well, I'm never playing these. Oh, and also you know pinball machines at the time, and so I got super frustrated with them, and I said I'm never playing these again. Um, and oh, then so you I gave s- up like right around the renaissance of pinball exactly, machines came out, like exactly. Black Knight, uh, and then um, Tempest showed up, and I said I don't play video games, so you have to see this. And I went fine, and. So we walk into Marin Pizza Pub <laughs> okay. in San Rafael, California, which had the largest collection of arcade games at that time. And here's Tempest with these beautiful colors and these perfectly straight lines, not jaggy at all because yeah. it was a vector display, not a raster display. And I went, ah, 3D. Goes, oh, this is the same year Tron came out, wasn't it? 81? Uh, temp- yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know if it was 81. Maybe. Yeah. Well, I always say 82 because I remember the even years of the 80s were like the awesome ones for movies. Yeah. And uh, so so I started dumping huge numbers of quarters into Tempest. And uh, I'm still okay at it. Ah. Is no, that true? This isn't it. This is not it. Okay. <laughs> He's showing me a video on his phone. That's not it. Uh... Okay. Dink. See, the problem is it doesn't, I hit a button and it doesn't skip the intro, so I keep hitting the button thinking Uh-oh. it'll skip the intro, it, and then buffer, immediately buffer, the thing ha, ha, pops ha. up, and then it's like, ha, ha, you've selected something. They need to, like, wait a few seconds before mm. they make you select. It also seems Apparently. like, what's with the pause yeah. uh, in, the, in the opening video? Okay. Okay, you have to hit play to get to this screen. All right. Okay, far right. Ooh, they added lens flares. Clearly <laughs> next gen. <laughs> Definitely the 90s. Mechanized Who planet is this Red voice? Eye. He sounds like he's just like bored. The mechanized planet Red Eye. I think it was good. I think that'll be the, I think having like Ben Stein narrate this would have actually made it more interesting. Oops, I forgot your cheesy bread. I'll be right back. I mean, I'm sure they just grabbed anybody <laughs> and stuck them in front of the microphone that they could. And if this was actually made in Japan, they might have just like picked the first guy they could find that could speak English that they could. <laughs> Here we go. Here we have lens flare. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it goes all blurry and blocky. You've been chosen to Star League. Greetings, Starfighter. You have been recruited by the Star League to defend the frontier against Zur and the Kodan Armada. Yes, yes. That's the sort of thing I remember. That's the sort of thing my I memory cells are devoted to. I briefly worked for the guy who created the CGI for that. Oh, really? Yes. Do you still have the models? No. Uh. <laughs> or at least not on the farm. That's, well, going back to Jim Morris when we were talking about yeah, that. Yeah. He had the ones he, they used for the arcade game. Uh huh. Um, and, um, you know, used that on for some M2 demos. Mm-hmm. We're, not, we're not doing good on our. On our M2 uh, uh, promise yet. Yeah. yeah. Not well, yet. not going to do, period. We're already into March. We missed all of February with doing a. <laughs> Well, a you know, video, but okay. Both have jobs. Oh, know. my gosh, yes. Yeah, so. Ow, ow. But yes, yeah, see, now we have textured meteorites or asteroids. Yeah, I'm not sure it really improves much. I mean, <laughs> that was one of the. I, I mean, I liked the, um, I guess, the flat, clean lines of yeah. the original Starblade and uh, Galaxian 3. It's, uh, yeah, that's, that's one thing to say about it. I mean, that and. It, uh, it actually looks. Um, 
it ages better. Hmm. Because <laughs> it looks like you know, that's like kind of looks like it. Like, oh, well, it's a stylized look or something. Mm -hmm. Versus this is like, they're attempting to make it look more realistic, but then it's falling short. You know, it's kind of like the mm -hmm. CG Uncanny Valley thing, where it's yeah. like, you know... Yes, your cheesy, noisy brown texture isn't convincing us that it's really rock, you know, as opposed to, eh, it's just... It's a bunch of uh, flat-shaded polys. Mm -hmm. It's a little closer to, you know, thinking, you can just think of it as you're in virtual reality or something, you know, or, or it's a computer display. Now the other the other um, thing, at least about this, is that in the original arcade game you had like a real joystick, and so you could flip yes. the cursor over the, across the yeah. screen real quickly. That's why I was wondering if this might actually support the uh, the flight stick or something, because yeah. analog control would be awesome. If you're right about now. Wait, does the no? It didn't even implement the. If you hold down like one of the buttons, oh, it'll the cursor will go faster. At least it might be an option, but. It, yeah. Actually, didn't see any options. No. Yeah. Wow, I died much faster. That see, the textures are distracting. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, the. Uh, I mean, that's something like you know the the CG in Tron. You can now I can now render in real time on my cell phone. Mm -hmm. But it it looks it still looks good because it's yeah. it's CG attempting to look like CG. It's not you know. Mm, right. So it's and it's highly stylized, and they the people who did it had really good taste. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you had Sid Mead and Mobius and yeah. you know, a few other designers. So you know, they weren't just throwing stuff up on the screen. They thought about you know, well, we've only got X number of polygons and shapes we can use. Mm -hmm. Make sure they all count. You know, make sure that each one you know says something, has a nice silhouette, and nice clean lines. And mm -hmm. uh, whereas nowadays it's just like, ah, eh, yeah, I'll just throw some more polygons. Just throw a million in. polygons. We'll just buy a bunch more. Uh, throw some more Nvidia shaders card. at it. And, yeah, you know. we'll buy a bunch more Nvidia cards. You know, throw it in the render farm, and we'll sell it as a cloud service after we're finished production. But yes, uh, the, there's something to be said for for old CG. Mm -hmm. Having the old CG, I think, makes you think a little more carefully about geometry. Well, yeah. Um, I remember uh, when they were... It's kind of weird how, like, when they were first doing M2, they suddenly was like, wow, we have so many polys, we won't know what to do with them all. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, it could do like what was it like a half million polys per second or something, was it something like that. Well, I mean, yeah, it's which depending is like, on the size of the polygon. Which you know, if they were used to coming off of PlayStation One, where you know your whole character could be made of maybe seventy polygons for the whole character, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, lower lower across breasts for you know three three triangles because that's all they could really afford on the model. Uh, yeah, she couldn't even afford a decent nose because it's right. like what well, take too many polygons, but. Uh, and then suddenly, you know, they said, "Hey, let's get, we, you know, we got so much power in the M2, we can now just let any old artists make polygonal models." And of course, they looked like they looked awful because, mm -hmm. you know, it was any old artist. Yeah, any old artist, and they were artists who weren't used to working with polygon. They maybe done three D packages, but they didn't think twice about how they placed their polygons or how many they used and all that mm -hmm. stuff. And so, you know, sure, they gave they they could have you know ten times at least as many polys as before to make up the character but it tended to look a lot flatter mm -hmm. and like look more like well like uh, boxy shapes you know I remember the first time we saw some of the cars that their non-game artists came up with uh. like the the you know the offline artists came up with uh -huh. in terms of thing and they look like cubes and it's like where did you spend all the polygons on this thing you know? oh we rounded them off yeah and it's like well give it to a game why don't you give it to a game artist who like struggles you know, to get something into 70 polygons and then say, now you've got 10 times as many polygons, show us what you can do. And he would, you know, make something that looked mm -hmm. really spectacular because, you know, they're used to working within limitations, you know. They're not going to squander their, their, their polygon budget. I mean, there's even a worse story about when they were trying to do a demo for M2 slash MX. And they brought an external artist in who wasn't work, used to dealing with limitations. Oh. And he, like... I dimly remember this. Yeah. And it was like... So we gave him, like, the polygon count. Uh -huh. And he was basically... He went, scoff. <laughs> yeah, basically. And we said, you can use this many polygons. And mm -hmm. we were saying, like, you know, per second. And he was, did it in one... Not only... He didn't do that many polygons in a single frame. He did that many NURBS. 
in a single frame. Oh, For those of you who don't know, nerves are a parametric surface that is meant to be later turned into... Non-uniform rational B-spine. Spine, yeah. yeah. Non-uniform rational B-spine, yeah. which basically it's a rubber sheet. Yeah. And the idea is you, depending on how close you are to the surface or how far away, it's like you turn that into as many triangles as you need, as many polygons mm -hmm. as you need. So you get closer to it, you, it turns into more and more polygons so that, right. you know, it always looks smooth. So it's an LOD kind of thing. Sort of, yeah. yeah. And so he was doing, he was blowing the polygon budget on a single frame just with NURBS, mm -hmm. which of course, are, you know, at minimum turn into two polygons and yeah. oftentimes turn into more. Uh, based on how curved they are and how close you are to them, and, mm -hmm. and he's and he just didn't understand this concept. He never learned the concept of a polygon. <laughs> Using Maya and all that stuff is just like, oh, uh, you know, the blah 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 numbers. Are, yeah, yeah. Exa exactly. It's like, well, you you know, you guys will figure it out because he wasn't used to working with like, no, this is hardware. This is it's not going to grow more hardware overnight. <laughs> this is what you got to deal with. And they were and they're really big. It's like you know, we we want to get a quote real artist, not one of these game artists. It's like. Trust me, the game artists are real artists, you know. So and there was that whole like, thing about... a certain your, art to cramming as much into, yeah. you know... Yeah, we, nowadays you refer to them as a technical artist. I, uh, somebody who can count and <laughs> live, with it, live within yeah. restraints and uh -huh. can be reasoned with, would be what you... <laughs> yeah. And knows how to use that, you know, 104-button mouse that sits in front of them. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, they... Uh, <laughs> just remember that... So, and I, I'm pretty sure they had to pay the guy to do all this stuff mm -hmm. and, and basically produce something that was unusable as a demonstration and mm -hmm. and then leave it up to the rest of us to come up with some technical demonstrations that were impressive. And, right. And like I said, we, when we get into a, doing an M2 video, I might show you like the results of some of that. Where it was like we had, yeah. The, I, you know, I never really saw much on the M2 because I was still doing, um, I was still doing sort of opera support. Right. Um, and I did design a couple of software components for the M2. Um, with the, oh, you um, did the splash screen, didn't you? No, no, I wanted to do the splash screen. I'm pretty sure that that logo that you came up with is actually what shows up on some of these 3DO systems that have been shown up in the wild. The, really. Uh, the, was it was it was it was it was it three D O inside or what what was that then that little logo you did no. that the you did it as a splash screen mock up but then I remember it just showing up I did it well I did a like I like drew a picture that I pinned up outside my cube like you know, sort of like a, a, a storyboard of how it might go and people kind of went Tuh. you know and, and in retrospect they were probably right but um, you're not the, a real uh, artist <laughs> what do you know yeah, well, you're a programmer what do you know it's like it was numbers and things and facts. Thanks, and thanks, thanks <laughs> a punch. Um, but I don't... Wow. Because you did this as a quest to see. It's like, how fast could you get something up on the screen uh -huh. um, that didn't have to load from disk or anything? Uh, it's like, like, what was the absolute fastest you could get something drawing on the screen that wasn't like you know text? You know, right, because you have to like load or decompress or anything like right. that. It would be just quick. Um, wow, no. If if I did that, I don't remember it. Uh, <laughs> I think I'll, it was I'll dig busy. it up. I, I remember what it was. I, 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 yeah. But, uh, <laughs> well, should we throw in Pyramid uh, Patrol slash Intruder? Sure. Uh, maybe you should play this one. Oh, <laughs> I've never played it. So. Neither have I. I don't uh, believe I've played... <laughs> uh, not this version. I've not played this version. I've played... Um, this is one of those that was... Uh, it poured to a bunch of platforms, and I first saw this on the Laser Active system, oh the the $2,000 without any actual game components Laser Active system. So people who complain that the 3DO was the most expensive game says, no, not by a long shot. Uh, <laughs> that was the one where you bought a laser disc player, and then you had to buy the components that actually sort of like overlaid the game graphics onto it. You I buy... think we discussed this in our first yeah, video. Yeah, we did. Yeah. We were doing uh, Burning Soldier. Right? Yes. But yeah, so uh, that's where I first saw this. We had this at a company. We were doing some titles that were going to end up on on the Laser Active. We were doing mm -hmm. video for them. It was CG for CG. Yeah, we were putting pre-rendered CG onto a laser disc. What a shock! And so <laughs> we got one from the company and mm -hmm. a bunch of these titles. And of course, I was like, "Wow, this is great! I'll never be able to afford this. Neither will anybody else." But it's awesome that I'm able to do this. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, one of these was a uh, pyramid patrol. Twenty thirty-five A.D. On 
huge and mysterious pyramid was discovered on Mars. It was built by aliens to be their headquarters for a massive invasion against the Earth. We read the plot in a special task force the Ziglot Delta Platoon was... I think it's the same narrator from... Uh... <laughs> yeah, from how many Mars movies do we have that one year? Yeah, I mean, he's, like, he's like the only guy in Japan who uh, can <laughs> speak English, so he, does, he gets to do all the narrations. Pyramid Intruder, yes is what it became on the 32-bit the, the, uh, consoles. But yes, originally it was Pyramid Patrol, I believe. Uh-huh. I don't know if this ever showed up in an arcade or not. I'm guessing I, I'm guessing not, if not maybe only in Japan. Game difficulty. Because it would have been... Oh, yeah. Trigger type. It would be kind of rare to see a Laserdisc game bombs. in the arcade in the 90s, except for like Mad Dog McCree and stuff like that. So, okay, so apparently I can select bombs, use bombs, and then just plain old shoot direction, normal, reverse. If I remember correctly, this one required the Sega module for the laser active to play. So basically you have Genesis graphics overlaid over mm. laser disc video. Okay. Yeah. So I'm oh. guessing this is not going to tax the system, except, I mean, except you know, the, the 3DO is doing the, uh, yeah. is doing compressed FMV as opposed to... Well, yeah, Cinepak. Yeah. yeah, or, or whatever. Yeah, whatever. We'll, see, we'll, see, we'll see what... Yeah, let's see what the self, self-running demo has to show us. Oh, we saw this. Yes. Shut up. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's see what this button does. I'm surprised that like some of the earlier Laserdisc games didn't make it onto the 3DO, like before the pre-crash mm. Laserdisc, like Cube Quest, uh, Mach 3. Mm. Um, I mean, Dragon's Lair obviously did obviously. all the all the Don Booth ones, but uh, well, I mean, th there like, was there the was... ones that were that were like this, where it was like they're overlaying graphics over 3D backgrounds, Star Rider, mm -hmm. uh, Vegas Battle, uh, Interstellar, Fantasy. Well, digital pictures ended up porting a lot of their stuff. I mean, well, th their stuff never showed up in the arcade as laser. They were oh, okay. they were that failed okay. uh, Nemo system, which was like mm. the switching between like four tracks of mm. VH on VHS video or something like that. Yeah, Insta Switch technology. <laughs> right? It's also known as gen locking or special effects generator. Well, no, I mean th their whole thing was like they had just the multiple tracks of video that they could switch between. It. Oh my god. Tape system. But really? At, but look at that state of the art uh, 3D <laughs> graphic background. Oh, Astron Belt. That's what I'm thinking. Like Sega's. Almost the first arc laser disc arcade game. Is that took, a thing? Took so long to be out that uh, so I had to let Dragon's Lair be it out. Hey, Pixel Shatter is back. Somebody was paying attention to Total Eclipse. Can't do that in the Genesis. <laughs> okay. So we take this guy to multiple times. What? Oh, I can reverse? Maybe not with that. Well, I, well, you can't be controlling this, obviously. No, I'm not. <laughs> No, all I'm controlling is the position of the greenish blue thing on the screen. Right. So it's basically a 2D shooter with kind of a vaguely, dis vaguely distracting background. Yeah, pyramids and Mars were really big at this point too for, for CG for some reason. <laughs> Maybe because it was easy because they required minimal texturing and mm -hmm. no, no uh, vegetation, which was really hard to do in CG at that point in time. That's I guess. Rocky, sandy surfaces, awesome. Or CG, so you tend to get a lot of that. Can these be killed? Because they're clearly part of the video. Yes, they are clearly part of the video. Although what they're shooting doesn't look to be. So we just found this uh, pyramid, and now we're just going to send you into it. What was that? <laughs> what was that RPG on the 3DO? That Japanese RPG that took place inside of a pyramid? Oh, man. Um, oh, God, that's going to drive me nuts now. It was like it was one of the first... It was like turn-based dungeon crawler, except you're inside of a pyramid the whole time. It, it might even have pyramid in the title. I do not recall, Senator. Oh, man. Ah. Uh. 
Okay, so that's where you're going next. They're showing you a CG representation of the CG they're about to show you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, three uh, R. Great, so you get to the center. So we're going to send this giant piece of firepower into this archaeological find. Oh, oh, hello there. Okay, now we're dealing with the, like a, an actual measured background, it looks like. Oh, Wikipedia has a 3DO entry, I'm amazed. But they have licensed games and unlicensed games. And I'm just like, what unlicensed games were there ever for the 3DO? We're speaking of licensed games, are they? I mean, nowadays they've, they've finally figured out how to crack the encryption. There are a few homebrew right. games, but... It's like, uh... So it might even have Pyramid in the title. Wow, there's a lot of games released for the 3DO. Yeah, no, it did okay. I think, yeah, somebody was doing a review of the 3DO saying it, it, it deserves a little more credit than it gets. We've been saying mm -hmm. that for a while. So if you think about it, it came out, it came out uh, fourth in the most crowded mm, yeah. generation ever, where there was like something like no less than 16 consoles launched in that generation, so... Well, apparently seal, of the, seal of the Pharaoh. That's okay. all I'm thinking of. Okay. <laughs> I knew once I saw it, it would jog me. Mm. Yeah. Oh, hello there. Uh, here's our canned FMV again. Oh, uh, yes. This also reminds me of a ride film they have at the Luxor. Uh, it's in Showscan, if you've ever, ever been to one of those. No, I haven't. Uh, yeah, it's, it's quite awesome to see. It's, like, it's amazing that that technology is still better than like what we have in theaters, although they're trying to get there. Where it's like it was Showscan. Yeah, it was like 50, uh, 60, no, 60, frames 60, 60 frames a second. Yeah. 70 millimeter. Um, You'll yeah. burn through. Yeah, it's. Uh, your, oh, your eyes eye. just registered as real because of the high frame rate and the high resolution. So it's like it didn't, you, they didn't even, you didn't even need 3D for it to work on you. It was like, yeah. The show scan, the, the one they did a demo film where it's like you're in the theater and you're waiting for the show to come up, mm -hmm. the, you know, the, the thing that lights come out. And yeah. then it's like you hear like this thing, like this guy swearing. Uh -huh. And a door open, and a door opens up on the screen. A guy comes out, and he's going to fix the screen. It takes you to realize to realize the film has started. <laughs> they they didn't have to turn down the lights or anything. It's just started, and the guy that you're seeing there is actually just rendered, just projected. On the, yeah, and it's like because it's it's so crisp and clear, and there's just no like flicker you normally see in a movie. Huh. That it's like your guy goes, wait a minute, he's not there. What? The? And he's and they do it perfectly. Because he's perfectly scaled to the mm -hmm. height of the screen because they're you know the surf scan theaters are like perfectly measured and everything. Mm -hmm. So it just looks like there's nothing that gives you a clue that there's you know there's not really a person there. Oh, burn it! <laughs> wow. No, I haven't. I haven't had that. Um, I've done the uh, IMAX experience on a few occasions. Yeah. And they used to have a a, scale, a slightly scaled down version of it, Universal City Walk, where. It would, they were ride films where the whole platform moved, oh, but yeah. they were also sort of a mini show scan setup. So mm -hmm. you had it. It wasn't again. It wasn't 3D, but between the motion and the the high frame, it was good. They had like you know racing one, and there was like space race, and there was mm -hmm. like a de a desert buggy ride race, and they were all like event films. That was the kind of thing they were trying to you know get people into the theaters because yeah, home video is going to kill us all. <laughs> and uh, well, it kind of. I mean. Yeah, it's, now you got is. now I mean, you got you know 3D and high frame rate uh, high frame rate movies that are trying to pack you into the theater mm -hmm. experience. And it's oh, gonna be interesting how? to see if like gravity works on my home setup. Yeah, because um, I do have a 3D set. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's yeah, it's pretty good, but it's like, will it uh, will it work on a film like Gravity? That'd be nice if it did. That was a beautiful film. I had, I actually have to pick up a copy. I bought a copy for my dad for his birthday. It was last week. And it's on it's on Blu-ray. It's on Blu-ray. Yes. It was actually it was actually out before they knew if it was going to win anything or not. Mm. So they they don't they shipped it 
literally, uh, it shipped actually the you know the week after the Oscars, but obviously they didn't. So I'm sure later down the road there'll be the you know super special edition Oscar mm -hmm. winning edition or something of like that. I got, got it as a gift for my dad because they do have a 3D set as well. And I need it. You know, my parents don't go to the theaters anymore because it's just a, a nightmare. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, it costs a lot. You know, it's like I think I think last film I've seen was the one I saw with you, which was the Lego Movie. Ah. Wow, that was fast. Ah. Credit three. How do you add more credits? I don't know. Do I push that button to continue? Yeah. I... Do I have to start over again? Yes, I do. All right. They make you start completely over? What's the point of having credits if you can't continue? Well, you start over from this segment. Ah. Oh, you mean, well... Yeah, so, I, I so let, they have I really let the last one die, so... Ah. Well, at least they tell you how, you, how, how much your shield is... Uh, which itself is a little pyramid, aren't they clever? <laughs> but yes, I, don't, I still have to pick up a copy of Gravity for myself. See if it uh, if it holds up on the smaller screen. Mm -hmm. I guess I'll just sit really close. <laughs> <laughs> Sound-wise, I should be okay. Let's see if yeah, I, have to, I still have to solve that problem in my own uh, home I'll see, here. If the, I'll see if the 3D holds up as well. Mm -hmm. you know, how, big, how big is your set here? Your little DLP here. It's um 49. Oh really? Yeah. It's not, I thought it was like fifty or above. Yeah. It might be fifty. I I don't remember. Yeah. It's like, you so know, I'm not, I don't I don't I don't measure those things. I just stand around measuring the size of my you know, equipment. The the standard standard HD, I hate that's kind of odd to say now, are rapidly coming down in price because yes. they're trying to push the four K. Right. Yeah, not gonna Oh if you're not gonna you bite that. Thing. What? The Seiki four K for like five hundred dollars? Oh well, yeah, but that's not in a reasonable size or 39 inches yeah that's not a reasonable size Let me well it's great it. for a computer monitor oh i'm sure it is but i don't want to watch movies on a computer monitor <laughs> thank you very much but uh but thankfully those uh those folly tv sets of 4k since there'll be no content for quite a while mm -hmm. uh for that oh but your blu-rays will upscale really well now nah, not buying it sorry but it's causing the regular hd sets to come down in price now so mm. you're seeing like 55 mm -hmm. inches starting at like 3D set starting for like nine hundred dollars and stuff. So it's like wow. before you think about updating your little DLP chip, you might consider yeah, it would be waffle thin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it'll probably consume. I mean, this thing consumes only like sixty watts. Mm -hmm. uh, but the LEDs have come down in price too because they're all now LED backlit. So right. So, so I died again. Just, okay, get over here. And since the, and since the laser that. LED. DLPs are also no longer in production. Yeah, I can't. Except for can't cell phones. Freaking lasers. <laughs> Except for cell phones. Although there's a front projection laser TV I, I keep making my eye on that they finally have the second generation out. And it was like, it was ridiculous before because it's a, it's a front projection screen, right? You're just thinking, well, God, that'd be annoying. Except that the original version, you only had to have two feet away from the wall. Uh -huh. projector because it's freaking lasers mm -hmm. it doesn't have to worry about uh, image spread and focus you know it's, right. it's lasers the new one i think can go something like within like 10 inches of the wall so basically you wouldn't even notice it it's basically a footlight at your wall mm -hmm. and it projects you know straight up so it's like it's essentially like having a rear projection set in terms of thickness mm -hmm. it's even thinner than your your rear projection set would be except it's in front uh-huh and the only, of course, the first thing I saw about that was, oh, I've got a, you know, what about the cat? You know, but, but apparently it's got a <laughs> sensor, so yeah, it doesn't, uh, yeah. So if it detects something in front of it, it shuts off. Get down from there. Yeah. You have one credit left. Am I going to continue on your? Credit? Well, you have to start over anyway. I'm, apparently, I'm sucking. I only did well. Well, the what's first the point time. of credits if you have to keep starting over? Well, no, I think you have to complete the stage, and then if okay. you complete the stage, then you get to continue from the stage, mm. the the latest stage you're able to do, which apparently I can't do again. <sighs> That's yes, that's, I'm lame. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not it's, it's their lame uh, game design people. I mean, come on. <laughs> well, because otherwise they would have to start you in the middle of the FMV somehow, and they probably oh, like you know. couldn't start on a specific frame of FMV not without seeking through or it or pausing. You know, even again. This okay. Okay, wait. Okay, it? yes, I realized the original source of this was a laser disc game, but even then, it would not be hard to pause the laser disc. 
put up the continue screen and then immediately, mm, like which the, I, like they Star did on they did, yeah, yeah, which they well that was an delicious game, but wait, is this am I missing yeah. something? Here? No, you're not missing anything. Wow, you are Are just you... controlling your 2D sprite. Over is the there screen. a way to speed up the speed of this thing? Of your of your cursor, I guess. Yeah. No, He's, if there the is, the controls I on this are really <laughs> sluggish to say the least. Right, cause this I'm, is your I'm, first time playing it too, huh? Okay. Oh, wait, am I supposed to pick those up? Um, yeah, the letters or whatever the hell. That spell something in English, maybe? <laughs> Taito. Yeah, it's not one yeah, of your, your shields more are almost gone already, not, so. Yeah, okay. I, I get what you're I get what you're throwing down here. Well, like that? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. We I, this would be a great game with a mouse. <laughs> yeah. Poof. That's not uh... so. They, so you use the last continue. So. Okay. Well, greetings, Starfighter. <laughs> but faster. Uh... Well, yeah. So you could have a so you could you have a hundred inch this. screen. Yeah. With frickin' lasers. <laughs> with Just projected on. The... Oh, you, oh, you kind of get Keystone correction for free. <laughs> don't you? It's a laser. It's the magic. Lasers are magic. Because the only other laser DLP products that they now make are the uh, ones for cell phones. Is now the big thing that TI is sticking them into what? cell phones or little hubs, little uh, oh. bumps for cell phones, so uh -huh. you can use it as a presentation. Because why haven't what... I seen this yet? That sounds cool. Uh, it's like it's still fairly dim because oh. you know it's starting in something the size of not right. even a postage stamp, and you're projecting onto a wall. It's like well, you can get a like a 50 inch screen at what they say is okay brightness, but it's just like. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, yes, so it's you impressive. Need a super bright laser to make this work. Yes. Yeah, which probably means you need super heat sink to dissipate. That I don't much think power. it's a heat issue. It's just more of a, a power issue more yeah. than anything else. It's like I don't care if it's on the cell phone. Uh, mm -hmm. they, I, somebody said, just make a little standalone one that's the size of maybe maybe your cell phone itself, and that you could just mm -hmm. place on the desk or whatever. Because I've seen the Optomas, these little like you know, I guess I want to say cell phone sized packs, and all they do is project video right um stuff like that yeah there's but now it's like uh, what's his you know the big boys are now getting involved you know like sony i think is now this is not going to be the next push for a business phone is this uh mm -hmm. laser dlp well good luck to him although I, it's, although i'm um, just going to wait for full-on holograms how about that <laughs> i don't know that's um see uh, sony's um Kind of going through a lot of self-inflicted changes at the moment. Yeah, they keep trying to chase what the next big thing will be. Yes, yeah, so I thought that was going to, supposed to be the PS4. But... Oh, that's doing well. It is doing well for them. And okay. So, good. Which, but I'm not sure they invested enough. It might have even surprised them how well it did because I think they were thinking more. After the PS3, that maybe the uh, you know they should invest more in the cell phone market, so they, huh. might, they might be surprised because they're having production issues, which usually means like they just underestimated the demand, which mm -hmm. like, you, don't, you don't want to do because you're just leaving sales on the table then for your competitor to pick up. Mm -hmm. Especially like next week is Titanfall on the Xbox One, which is their you know killer app for the what they think for this year at least. Uh -huh. And so, you know, if people still can't find PS4s, it's going to be awfully tempting if, you know, so the killer app like a comes a bundle, out. Yeah. A bundle deal thing for the, for the X-Bone? Oh, yeah. They've, they've already got that. They've got, you know, basically buy an Xbox One, get a free copy of Titanfall. And mm. I've, they've also started doing, like, Forza is another one for people, you know, for the... For the oh, my God, what happened? For the freaks of... I guess it maybe hit the ground. I don't know. Huh. For the freaks of nature that don't like mech games. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It's like first person shooter with mechs. You push the start button. You're reading my diary. <laughs> <laughs> Mind if I do. It's like what 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 doesn't giant robots make better? You know? <laughs> it's like let's let's take Halo slash Call of Duty and add mechs. What wouldn't be improved by mechs? Uh, <laughs> Pacific <can't>, Rim. <laughs> with, can't really with, argue with that, no. <laughs> it's actually well, I've actually played the beta, it's actually pretty good. So. Oh, okay. I'll have to pick up a copy, although I might not have to pay for one. Let's see if I can do yeah, a straight-up trade with somebody. Yeah. Care, careful about that. <laughs> what? No, no, no. Legally, not have to pay for one. Sense of 
I know somebody who can get, get a copy for it for free, it's a promotional legitimately, copy. a promotional copy, okay, and right. I can get a promotional copy of a game they'd want, okay. and we're going to just do a straight up trade, probably. Okay, so. right. There are perks for working for a game company. You get swag and free games. Are you looking forward to a GDC? Yes. Especially since I can actually walk to it. Oh, all right. <laughs> I don't, I don't have to worry about hotel rooms, I don't worry about commute or anything. I literally can just walk to it from my yeah. office. So. Yeah, and then go back and just see how the build went. Yeah. Oh, I don't have to worry about that. Anymore. That's what cell phones are, you silly person. <laughs> <laughs> Beep! Oh, it died. Damn. No, we're not, I'm not worried about the, the build. Is it? Did I? Oh, okay. Yeah, so the, B button, the B button launches your bomb. I'm just worried because I'm not... I don't seem to be firing anything. You're, you're firing little weird missile yeah, things. Yeah, what are these I, things? I don't know. They're Why not would as I good as the them? other thing. Why would I want them? I don't know. <laughs> Why did they give them to me? Let's try that. You should never give somebody a less powerful weapon in a game. That's just bad design all around. People do not like to get less powerful things as the game goes on. So you're being punished. The bomb. Am I am I supposed to pick those up? I still haven't figured out like what I thought I figured things with letters I should pick up. Right, you know? no the the, the bombs you're the... supposed to pick up because you only, you only get like the one, so Okay. Okay, so apparently But I can't tell what the bomb is. I really can't tell. <laughs> oh mighty bomb bomb bomb. <laughs> <laughs> I mean I'm being I'm being Attacked by these rejects from the abyss, I and mean, I'm just not really, you know. Okay, watch the ground. Avoid the ground. What? What was that? What was that? I literally just did. I was I supposed to uh, keep hammering on them? Was I, I supposed know. to do something to deactivate the shield, maybe, or something? I don't know. I don't know how I got through the first time. I was just like, you know, button mashing. I'm. I tried button. I guess we see why this was such a horrendous success when it came out. All right. Well, if you make enough ports of it, eventually you'll make money. I guess this is the way it goes. <laughs> yes. I liked how the Starfield hey, showed up on top of the engine. Uh, well, of course. Look, character animation. Yeah. We have a hand. Yeah. We have hand. Okay. Yes, a claymation hand. Here. All right. Oh, geez. That, I hate to, I hate to say awful. Burning Soldier was better than this. Uh. Oh, that's that's not hard to say at all. Like, <laughs> so, like, I still can't figure out what I'm supposed to pick up. Versus... Okay, so that that blinky thing I think you're supposed to pick up, but the I end. don't know what it gets you. So the N multiplies my... Because, you know, N stands for multiply. <laughs> N is for float, huh? What is that? <laughs> okay, that thing is a bomb. Am I supposed to pick that? Right, and then the B button will launch it. Okay. Okay. So this is like Sinistar. I'm picking up Cinnabombs and. Uh... Uh, look, this seems that way. And then the L. Oh, L is the laser. Oh, I don't want that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, assuming size matters and everything, they're, they're not, not. And they're also slow. First of all, lasers do not travel at sublight speeds. Okay, so that's. <laughs> that's not a laser. That's this is. This and, more and, like, and now you're out of shield. So this is more like frosting. Okay. <laughs> Red ketchup. Or... Speaking of rebel assault, uh, pew pew. Is there any way I can replenish my shields? Does maybe, uh, does maybe I... Q stand for shield not or something? That I, like that? Not that I observed. <laughs> some some random letter. It's like the one in Arkanoid where it's like, hey, what is, try and guess what these letters mean. There's another bomb. Can I? Okay, so do I have to use the bomb? Well, I don't know. Now I'll never know. <laughs> do I have to use the bombs on the pyramid shield, maybe, to drop the pyramid shield? I don't know. I Again, I don't know how I got through it the first time. Actually, those look like electron orbitals for for atoms. <laughs> as, uh, <laughs> what shell? Probability what? valence. Uh, yes. Yeah. Which is... Some of the stuff I was doing at Caltech uh, mm -hmm. for visualizing these for poor students who couldn't. Uh... I'll I wouldn't mind seeing those because I still don't. I'm still I still hold the Borean model in my head, mm. which is balls whirling around balls. Yeah. Nah, nah, nah. 
Yeah, yeah, I know that's incorrect, but that's still the model that I have in my head. The joys of ISO surface rendering. Ooh. It's <laughs> a couple of SIGGRAPH papers there. Um, <laughs> marching cubes. Your friend. That's that's how you visualize a uh, an ISO surface, like probability ISO surface. Marching cubes. That's, uh, now we're basically you divide up the world, uh, the whole. Uh, you buy a 3D space and then you go through it, you basically sample and then you, there's a whole bunch of rules of like if it's less than this and more than this and the adjacent cube you put a you draw a triangle from one corner to the other and then there's, and that if you basically figure out all the rules of how to whether you're inside or outside the ISO surface. Watch out for the L, don't take up the L. No! Oh, oh. I can't help it, it's so beautiful. <laughs> that hurt. I can't tell if I'm actually, if there's an issue of like, if I actually need to like avoid walls or not. You know, some of these later games you have to avoid the walls, mm -hmm. the pre-rendered walls. Like, yeah, no that you have no it. sense of depth to, there's like no shadow casting to let you, give you a hint as to how close you actually are. Oh, my shield, does it, does it just regenerate? How very progressive for 95. Well, I don't, what, your shield regenerated? I I was down at zero. Really? And it went back maybe up. Maybe if you maybe if you launch a bomb and then fly into the after thing, I don't know. <laughs> so I'm guessing we don't have the manual. No. I mean I have the box and I have the manual. I just didn't bring it with me because uh -huh. you know, why would I? <laughs> They're sitting in a box to be preserved to keep dust and other grimy things away from us. <laughs> Are they supposed to kind of switch weapons, maybe? There, there's, there's nothing to switch. Pew. I mean, I see icons, which you know, mm -hmm. have the universal meaning of nothing. Um, <laughs> and okay, so I mean, I'm, now do you keep up high? Do you keep up low? No, you no. just die. Okay, we're giving this up. All right, I mean, that's, that's, <laughs> just putting that aside. All right. I'm sure someone will let us know. What was I, supposed and to I happen. feel kind of bad because I always chastise other people who play games without reading the directions. But I figured <laughs> it's a rail shooter, really. Yeah. How much depth can there be <laughs> to it? It's a port of a freaking laser active game. There can't be much depth to it, but apparently there is. Was, like, uh, uh, Ryan, actually, the first thing it reminded me of was a game that uh, Dave Needle worked on back in the 80s, I think, mm. where they had like a laser. It basically was a bunch of like repeating animations of tubes. Right. You know, various tunnels that you flew through. You're talking about Cube Quest? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah he worked on that. <laughs> Recently emulated MAME. Oh, really? Yes, if you're willing to download the 21 gig uh, <laughs> laser disk image file. What the hell? Is that is it it's pretty much... X HD format? What the hell? It's uncompressed. They don't compress anything for MAME. They don't believe in... so. It's, Lo no loss of fidelity? It's, or... it's, yeah, it's a lossless codec, essentially. Okay, DV then. So, yeah, essentially, it's raw. It's the raw video signals. What their their ultimate goal is to, because uh -huh. they're actually trying to modify laser disc players to just output the raw voltages, and they just want to store that. <laughs> because they said that's the ultimate format. We don't want to get, in, you know, we don't want to. Basically, they don't want to re encode, you know, re encode anything. Yeah. Because yeah. then they said, because then you want to say, you know, because it is an analog format, so it's like how yeah. do you preserve it, you know, properly. Mm -hmm. So they want to, you know, they're making a little circuit board to stick in laser disc player that. So does, they don't have to like encode the video after it's already been decoded. They just mm -hmm. want to take the the raw voltage from the the pickup and store that, and then write wow. write your own uh, wow. decoder to your heart's content to get in the optimal video format. You know, you can put all the comb filters and everything you want on it, or, wow. or you know, three D filters or whatever to get the uh, to get the ultimate thing. And Cube Quest was one of those because the company. Went bankrupt after their first game, and the guy who's well, did it making does their it. first game is. I think it was, um, if I don't know if I'm remembering the story correctly, um, but yeah, Cube Quest was the first game, right? And they and they were going to make a bunch of them. Well, yeah, uh, and they didn't. Yes, well, and, the the crash happened. They needed right. money, and they released a little prematurely, so it wasn't quite finalized. Mm -hmm. It's a working game, but they said, you know, it's like the gameplay is just not as good as it should be it's just you know it's very pretty imagery and it's so a I corridor know, shooter i don't know if it was cube quest or the thing they were working on next but the story i remember here and this may be for a completely different game but the story that i remember dave needle telling is they they designed the printed circuit board that the components were going to get stuffed into they sent off the masks 
and to make like a quarter million dollars worth of boards. Right. A lot of boards. These are these are big boards. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if they were just two layer or maybe four layer or anything more sophisticated. Back then it was probably just two layer. Um, oh, front and back. Um, right, because it was video decoding and it also had overlaid 3D polygonal graphics. Actually, technically it was the first one, yeah. even before iRobot. Uh -huh. <laughs> Although iRobot, I think, made it out first, but this was the first one shown. Um, but uh, yeah. yeah. So, so, so they sent this order, they had this order come in. The order comes in on a weekend. So none of the techs are in the the building. And it, all you have to do is look at the board, and if you're a tech, and you will immediately see there's something wrong. Because apparently what had happened is someone had like laid something down on the mask. Like a, a sheet of paper had come off and just like... Is there like a big hand so print in the middle of the circuit board? There, there was just, no, <laughs> no, there was just this like giant triangle in one corner where it was just solid copper. And it was clear that there were supposed to be traces there. Right. Because they just go, but they just go into this solid mass of copper. Um, so the mask had been screwed up. It was obvious the mask had been screwed up. But there were no texts there to say, this is obviously... A the guy who was there... Was, Signed for the board and said they're okay. <laughs> ...was, I think, the accountant, who right. was an officer of the company, signed for the boards. Yeah. Texts come in on Monday. This is shit. We can't use these. We can't... And the board somebody says, no, an officer signed off on this. We're done. You know... You said it was okay. And, you know, a person empowered to say it was okay said they were okay. Well, so they lost a quarter million dollars. Yeah, you can still sue on that. As, as, as the American justice system has taught us anything, you can sue for anything. Yeah. You can, Whether you, you can prevail is another yes. matter entirely. And, you know, you can always prove that, like, well, yes. <laughs> they obviously did something wrong. Yeah. And even if the guy signed for it, you know, this is not accepting a soap. This is <laughs> accepting, you know, yeah. liability. And the question is, do you have time and money to pursue it in court? Mm. I'm well, guessing well, this time no, didn't. They just sank a quarter million dollars in boards. Right. So, right. no. <laughs> no, you protest the charge with PayPal and you get this. <laughs> <laughs> so, no. Yeah, I think that is the the Q Quest one. I, did they so did they just have to like run a bunch of jumpers for every board and try and no, make them? No, there was, the I mean, I don't think there was any way to salvage them because yeah. there was enough. Sounds a lot like. Gee, this sounds a familiar story. It sounds like the the first patch of the M2 chips, doesn't it? Oh, with the missing layer. Yeah. Yeah. Our five layer chip that only had four layers on it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but somehow we magically could get parts of it working. That was uh, in that, time for E3. That was that was some brilliant uh, salvage work there. What was it Nick? What was the guy who did it? Trantos. No, no, Nick. Nick Trantos was a software guy. There was another guy in hardware who created the. So the problem. The, the thing that was the biggest thing that was broken on that chip was the video output and the frame and some frame buffery thing. Well, I thought no, I thought the biggest thing was and the so setup had, engine. So they had so they had this um, secondary PCM CIA card or something, which was called the Knickknack, named after Nick somebody, mm. and Nick that was how we got the, video out on the yeah. earliest prototypes. Well, yeah, the, but the other the really big thing was the setup engine. So yeah. it can only accept long form of stuff. Mm -hmm. So the CPU is doing all the work that was normally to be done by the chip in terms of setting this up mm -hmm. and all the, you know, right. turning these into... Originally, there wasn't going to be a setup engine because some hardware guy said, oh, you don't need that. Yeah. <laughs> Gee, I wonder who you could be talking about <laughs> with that accent. Uh, yeah, but... Uh, that was painfully obvious from when, when they had Just to the when M2 had to run the without the uh, setup engine. Oh, yeah, greatly spent because like did what, didn't they, they? They only got like a few thousand polys per second without that setup engine mm. in those demos they had. It's like look at the cow, look at the yeah. the chain link fence, and how smooth it looks. That's awesome. Can uh -huh. we see maybe some more polygon? No, 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 no. <laughs> Objects oh, on the sailboat. Yeah, uh, that couldn't run. I think without the setup engine either. Mm. That was like yeah, you know, yeah. It's basically you could look at some nice static scenes of mm -hmm. really well textured but relatively flat objects, polygonal planes, and mm -hmm. fences. Fences are great because they're two polygons. Yeah, <laughs> just a lot of textures. So we're at the what? The oh, one think, hour mark. I think we're at the hour mark. Yeah. So uh, I guess we'll uh, button this up. I don't know, unless we have like another rail shooter laying around that we could. Oh. Uh, I just want to throw in like one of the uh, mini games in Jurassic Park. No, I think I think I think Jurassic Park needs an episode of its own. Oh yes. <laughs> oh boy. Yes. Uh, do you want to do a Cinema Sins and a What's the Cost of that one? <laughs> you know. Oh boy. <laughs> we probably be less first... Hedger running through the field. For... <laughs> <laughs> Thirteen fifty, or the price My of his favorite beer, or uh, what's his name? Uh... <laughs> 
uh, May, what's his name? Phil, May, Phil Maynard's kids pretending to be uh, <laughs> Lexi and uh, what's his name? Yeah, basically, oh, welcome to the world of Hollywood licensing and lack thereof. Yes, yes. You may have the rights to all the images in the film except anything involving actors. And yeah. Actors guilds are really, yeah, really particular the film, about the... Not for the actors in the film or the music in the film or, you know. Welcome to the concept of a union shop. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, thank you very kindly for joining us once again. Uh, uh, and uh, I don't know what we've got uh, left uh, in the pile here, but uh, we still have to finish Monster Manor. We you still, know. Yeah, still have to finish that. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I'll maybe I'll record uh, an episode uh, at RJ's place. I don't know. Just kind of like arm twisting. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. But again, thanks very much for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Peace. <laughs>